state machines are a topic that I have curiously not covered in past episodes, partly because I haven't had much need for them in my own applications, and also I feel they can be easily overused in Rails apps. However, I do think there are some good use cases for state machines, and when that moment strikes, there are a plethora of gems available to help you out. In this episode, it will be a little bit different. I'm going to give you a tour of three different state machine gems, the top three here on the Ruby toolbox. But first, before I get into that, let me show you an application where I think a state machine would be a good fit. A classic case for a state machine is an e-commerce application with an order model. Uh, usually this will go through different states as the user is checking out and the order is being processed. In this case, I'm keeping track of that with date time columns in the database, or you might also use Boolean fields. So I'm keeping track of when the user purchases the order. If it has been canceled, I'll keep track of that time and the time it was shipped. Now, if you find yourself adding a lot of date time or Boolean fields to a table, that's an indication that you may want to use a state machine, especially if those fields depend upon each other. For example, you probably won't want to ship an order unless it's already been purchased, and you probably won't want to ship an order if it's been canceled and vice versa. Now, another indication is a lot of Boolean logic in the model. For example, in the order model here, I have this open method, and for an order to be considered open, it must be purchased but not canceled or shipped. And I often have to duplicate this kind of logic in the database queries as well. For example, here I have this open orders uh, query, which does that same uh, check to see that the order's been purchased, but not canceled or shipped. Now this in itself isn't too bad, but things can quickly get out of hand if I need to handle returned uh, shipments and refunded payments, maybe add an extra processing step in there. And it would be nice if we had some kind of states that we can keep track of what state the order is currently in without having to do all of this logic. By the way, the rest of this class is just filled with different events that can happen. Uh, if the order is purchased and it's a valid payment, then it's going to mark it as such. And uh, shipping, canceling, and resuming the orders can all happen as well. And I also have specs for this class. And this primarily checks the behavior of when an order is considered open. It's open after doing a purchase, but not an invalid purchase. Uh, after canceling, it closes the order, but resuming opens it up again. And shipping closes the order again. And also, I'm checking the open orders uh, query scope here to ensure that it's uh, just finding the open orders. Now my goal is to not modify these tests very much because I want this overall behavior to stay the same as we transition to a state machine. If you aren't familiar with state machines, I encourage you to read the Wikipedia entry on the topic. It provides a nice example of a turnstile which has two states, locked and unlocked. And an event can happen, such as inserting a coin or pushing the turnstile which will transition from one state to another. So the key vocabulary here is state, event, and transition, and those are often used in the DSL of the various state machine gems. Now let's take a look at the most popular gem for doing this, simply called State Machine. It's a very feature complete and can be used with a simple Ruby class, but it also has support for various ORMs, such as Active Record, Data Mapper, Mongoid, and more. And here's how you can set it up in your Rails application. First go into the gem file and add the State Machine gem there, and then next add a migration to add a string column called State to the model that you want it to affect. And then inside of that model, Add a call to a state machine, and you can set an initial state here if you want, and then you can specify different events using this DSL. And each event can have a transition, so it'll transition from one state to another, or you can pass in multiple states in here that it transitions from. By the way, a little tangent here, notice I'm not using the 1.9 hash syntax for mentioning these transitions. You could uh, write them like this as well, but this doesn't feel right to me because I like to think of uh, this syntax as setting a parameter to a given value, but these are both states that we're defining here. So I like to use the other hash syntax. If you want to stick with the 1.9 syntax, I recommend using the from and to options, which is a more verbose option, which you can pass in here instead of doing this. Now this gem also supports transitions. You can see here we have a before transition block, which happens when we go from an incomplete state to an open order, and this is going to process the payment. So that'll be triggered if we do a purchase event, and this is going to return either true or false, and if it returns false, it's not going to continue the transition. So that's the way callbacks work. It's uh, if we have an invalid payment, then it's just going to stay as an incomplete order. And then finally here, you can see this gem also provides this with state scope, which can be used to query the database. So this will return all the open orders. 
Now as for the specs of this class, I didn't have to change them at all when making this transition. I can call purchase on an order, which will trigger that purchase event. So each event has its own method, which you can call, and that will transition to the appropriate state. And if that transition fails, it will just fall back to the previous state. And so all the behavior works like I expect. Uh, I don't, no changes here. Now there is a lot more that we can do with this gem. Let me show you some things here in the console. First, I'll create a new order record, and we can see the current state of this order by calling state on it, currently incomplete. We can also check a state by calling it with a query method, and that shows us it's currently uh, incomplete as well. And we can see if we can perform a specific event at this given state by calling a can with the event, so let's say cancel, and we can currently not cancel this order, but can we purchase this order? That is true, so let's call purchase on this. And we can also call state events, which will tell us which events we can call from this given state. Really cool. Now most of the other state machine gems I'm showing here do provide this similar functionality. Another feature that is more unique to this gem is the ability to define behavior for a specific state. For example, you can add validations or uh, define methods inside of a state block, which will only take place when it's on that given state. This can be really handy for multi-page forms, but it does seem a little bit too magical to me. One of my biggest issues with this gem is the sheer size of it. The lib directory is uh, well over 3,000 lines of code, which is uh, about 10 times more than some of the alternatives. I'm very strict when adding dependencies to my Rails app, and I like to compare the size of the gem with how much I'm using it for, and in this case, I can't imagine uh, making it worthwhile for such a large gem. It feels heavy, but in your case, it might be a little different. So let's try out the next gem on our list, Access State Machine. Uh, this project seems to be more active than the alternatives, and it also works on either plain Ruby classes or active record models. To use this, add the AASM gem to your app, and then add a string column to your database called AASM State. By the way, the name of this column is configurable with all the gems I'm showing here. Uh, you can check out the readme for details on that. So in the order model, Things are a little different here. You need to include the module provided in order to add it, which you do inside of an AASM block. And in here you specify the states up front, and you can specify one to be initial here. Now the events are defined in a similar way as before, except the callbacks are handled a little differently. You add callbacks directly to the event, and that will trigger that method when that callback happens. And it doesn't seem to care what this method returns. However, you can add a guard clause to a specific transition so that it won't take place if that returns false. Another difference here is querying the database. I couldn't find a specific uh, name scope for this, but you can easily do just a where condition like this. All right, moving on to the order spec file, uh, there were a couple of changes I needed to make here to get the test passing. And one key difference is that if you call an event and that event fails for some reason, it doesn't silently revert back to the old uh, state. It's going to raise this invalid transition exception. Another difference is that the record doesn't automatically save to the database when transitioning to a new state. You need to call an event with the bang method if you want it to automatically save to the database. Overall, Access State Machine is a decent option, but I was looking through some of the code base and it does feel a little old, especially the Active Record Adapter and how it integrates with Rails. You can definitely tell it's an older project. Next, let's try out Workflow. This gem is much lighter than the others. It's made up of a single file that's just a few hundred lines long. To use it, just add the gem to your gem file and then add a string column called Workflow State to the model. And then inside of that order model, include the workflow module. Now the DSL for defining the states and events is a little bit different than the others. You pass in a block to the state call and then define events and what they transition to in here. This works really well in this situation with a nice concise uh, workflow, but I do prefer the other DSL because it makes the events stand out a little more. But what I do like about workflow is that uh, you can handle callbacks just by defining a method with the same name as the event. So in this case, we can do a purchase callback where we process the purchase and then halt the transition if it's not valid. This allows the event to take arguments, which you can see in the spec file. Whenever I call purchase, I can pass that argument into it. And because of this, each of the events need to be called with a bang because otherwise it would conflict with the defined method. 
So far, I've only covered three gems, but there are a lot more alternatives out there that you might want to consider checking out, such as the Transitions gem, but they all work fairly similarly, just storing the current state in a database column. However, you might want to keep track of more information, such as the history of the different states it's gone through and what time it uh, changed state. To accomplish that, you can use the State Machine Audit Trail gem that builds upon the first gem I showed you, or use something more generic, such as Paper Trail. Now I like to do something from scratch if it's not too complicated, so let me finish up with this alternative solution which uh, keeps track of a history of events and timing of it without using any external gem dependencies. First let me check out the orders table here which uh, doesn't have anything to keep track of the current state. That's all done inside of the orders events table which is going to be a separate model. So this belongs to an order and has a state string column. Now inside of that order model I have the uh, has many events association, and I'm defining the different states I support here in a constant and adding a delegation for the query version of the states to the current state method, which is defined down here. So this determines the current state based on the latest event, or if there isn't one, it's going to grab the first state as the initial state, which is incomplete. And I'm calling inquiry on this, which is going to uh, provide some additional query methods that we can call on the current state. Uh, this is something that active support provides, which is what makes this possible. Now the events are simply method definitions, which allow them to take arguments. And I first check the state that I want to transition from, and then I transition to the new state by creating a new event. And I can do this easily enough, uh, no need for a fancy DSL or crazy callbacks. The only tricky part of this is querying the database, which is done up here. I have a class method, open orders, which is a type of a scope here, where I am joining the events table and merging on some additional clauses which are inside of this order event scope. So this will find all the latest events which match a certain state. And you can see that defined here in the order event model. And I just have a couple of other things to find in this event model, such as uh, validations on the state to make sure it's within the order states. So overall, this is about 50 lines of code, and this custom solution keeps track of the history of events and timing of them all, and it doesn't have quite all the conveniences of the, uh, the gems provide, but you can add those custom methods as you need them. Well, that's it for this episode on state machines. Thanks for watching.